So we got back from our trip to Rocking Horse Ranch. We started thinking about whether or not Rocking Horse was really worth the cost. Like, was the value there? Exactly. It's a big package deal, and you pay a lot and you get a lot, and I think it's worthwhile to take a moment to think, would you make the same choice to book there again, uh, given the opportunity? And to start with, I think it's worth mentioning the friends that we traveled with mm -hmm. were part of the military, so they had a military discount, so it's worth noting that is available for anyone out there that's part of a military family. Absolutely. We love the way they support that. So we went during MLK weekend, so kind of mm -hmm. a busy weekend. Looked into it, and it turns out this MLK weekend we were there was actually the third most popular weekend of the whole uh, winter season, which is definitely one of their most popular seasons. And one thing I was very impressed by, the resort never really felt overcrowded. They felt like they had more than enough staff and more than enough space, and the way they scheduled things out, it felt, uh, you know, there was lots of people there, of course, but it wasn't too full. Our room was $900 a night. It would have been nine fifty to be in the main lodge. If that had been available, I would have so preferred that. True. That was yeah. kind of a bummer. You know, dashing back and forth between our external building and getting into the main lodge. For example, wearing swimwear to go to the indoor swimming pool. You know, the value being an indoor swimming pool would be great if you could just go straight from your room and never go outside in the cold yeah. uh, winter time. Uh, but that kind of cut down on that enjoyment factor for us. Or I'll also say that... They said the rooms were basically the same, but we got to peek in a little bit at the main lobby rooms. They seemed a little more updated, and then mm -hmm. this is really important even though it seems trivial. They had an area in the front that was a large hardwood area mm -hmm. with like a closet where you could put muddy boots from horseback riding, mm -hmm. swimwear, mm -hmm. puddle jumpers. Snow pants. Yeah. I mean, one of the main you know value propositions is that you're going to come in out of the snow, and mm -hmm. you're going to want it somewhere to take off all your gear. Uh, and so in our in our room in the Oklahoma building, it's just all carpeting, so it feels like you're going to kind of get it soaked and muddy and messy. Yeah. You say the accommodations kind of feel like three-star accommodations, mm -hmm. which is fine. The lodge has more of a four- to five-star feel, mm -hmm. but overall value, so we're paying 900 a night, and we're getting a lot of things included. Mm -hmm. So we're going to break down kind of what we value each item at and see how it adds up. So first of all, Mike, what would you value the room at if you were just booking a room? Like if this was a room mm -hmm. on its own in a hotel, what would you pay per night? So other than the meals and the activities, the room itself, I'd say it's like a, a 250 to $300 room. Yeah. What would you think? I would say probably 200 to 250 yeah. It did have bunk beds for the kids, which is kind of cool. Yeah, they enjoyed that. But Mike made a great point about the hangers to know what kind of room it is. Exactly. So you can get a sense for what level of expectation they have for their guests. When you see the way they treat you based on what kind of hangers they put in the closet. And are you given real adult hangers that are actual normal, you know, put it on the rack, pull it off with a normal hook? That's not what you get here. You get the kind that it's like built into a little security tab. And without that security tab, it doesn't work. Like, what do they think? We're going to steal the hangers? Are they really saving a lot yeah. of money by not having to replace so many hangers? So I feel like that's one indication, you know, to give a little microcosm, to give you a sense of the big picture of what kind of value you get when you're in there. It's, it's the kind of place that doesn't give you real hangers. Yeah. Come up to the conclusion of, is it worth it in the total value? How much do you ascribe value towards the meals that are included? Right. So, okay, we have 200 for the room. Mm -hmm. Um, then I'd say breakfast I thought was great. They had a full buffet and mm -hmm. they also did any kind of eggs to order, like mm -hmm. omelets or whatever you need. Mm -hmm. Um, drinks were included. I think that it would be fair to say $25 for breakfast. Yeah, easily per person. Yeah. Then, so for a family of four, which is what we're basing this on, right. that would be $100. Yeah, easily. Then New York pricing. Exactly. So lunch it's kind of a funny situation because I would also say like $25 a day because they had like a great salad bar. They had mm -hmm. some hot entrees. Mm -hmm. They had desserts. Um, do you agree? Definitely. Right in line. Yeah. yeah. The problem is I would never have eaten that much food for lunch. Also true. Like with such a big breakfast and like mm -hmm. such a huge dinner, I think that like, although I'm going to give it the $100 a day, Know that that's the value, but you might not have wanted it. For the mm -hmm. amount of food, I think my family would have been thrilled to have like four slices of pizza for $15. Yeah. So, you know, difference between what it's worth and what like... What you would have done yeah, if you didn't have it. Exactly. Yeah. And um, dinner, I mean, what do you think? It's a pretty fancy meal. This is the one that's actually served. You order off a menu and somebody mm -hmm. brings, you know, to your table as opposed to going up to the buffet. Uh, easily 
forty dollars a person. Yeah, I thirty-five, think, somewhere in there. I think forty a person yeah. because they actually um, do a kind of cruise style where you can order as many of the appetizers. Um, you can order as many salads, entrees as mm -hmm. you want. So like Wyatt was eating New York strip steak. We got like eight orders of shrimp cocktail. Mm -hmm. So yeah, at least $40 a person allowing for maybe adults to get a little more value and kids to get a little less out of it. Yeah, but, yeah. but it was really good. I like mm -hmm. the food. Um, coming off of a beaches trip pretty recently where we, we really disliked the food. Right. Um, this was great. Yeah, I was a little worried going into it. Uh, maybe if all all inclusive resorts aren't that good, but this one changed our mind. All right, so let me do some quick math. We got forty dollars per person for dinner is one sixty. Mm -hmm. Add another two hundred for lunch and breakfast. We're looking at three sixty for the mm -hmm. meals. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, I wouldn't spend three sixty in a normal day traveling, but I guess that is what this is worth. I agree. Yeah. Okay, so then how much value do we give towards ice skating? The ice skating was fine. Uh, yeah. The process of renting the boots was very well organized, very efficient. The The skating rink itself was very small. And it needed a Zamboni badly. It Pretty was kind of choppy. I would, it was cool that they had the little blue, yeah. little plastic things for little kids to get started practicing. I'd say like $15 a person. Yeah, basically. Okay, so that's going to take us from $580 up to $640. Mm-hmm. Then what about skiing? Because skiing is expensive. Like when we go as a family of four and we're getting lessons and everything, it's like a thousand dollars at a resort. For a whole family, for lift tickets and lessons yeah. and equipment rental. But this was not resort skiing. The hill itself is very small. Mm -hmm. So unless you're an absolute beginner, you're just not going to get much out of the actual little bunny hill. I'm not a very good skier and I was like, I could snow plow down this whole thing without a problem. Just, you know, go in pizza position. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. pretty... Pretty low key. They don't even give you poles, and I didn't freak out about it. So they don't give you poles, and poles aren't even allowed, even if you bring That's in true. your own poles oh, from I didn't outside. Know that. Yeah, no, I saw them tell somebody they weren't allowed. And they uh, don't have a real lift. It's a toe lift, and then like a mechanical. The lift. little uh, they call it a magic carpet. It's like a moving sidewalk, like in a airport, except it just goes up the hill very slowly. So even if you just go over and over again, you're going to spend more than half your time waiting or being on the lift and less than half your time coming down the hill. Yeah, you're sharing the lift with the tubers and like mm -hmm. every two seconds a kid would make a mistake and step off. So it took like 10 minutes to get up that yeah. lift. Now, they mentioned that there is instruction available. And to be clear, you're not getting like a private lesson or something. There's just a few people around who can kind of give you the basic mm -hmm. pointer of how to make a pizza wedge shape. If you've never heard of that before, it's not like fully yeah. hands-on teaching. So I would say, I mean, New York's expensive. Martin Luther King weekend, a lot of the resorts we looked at mm -hmm. wanted up to like 170 for a lift ticket. Mm -hmm. But this isn't even like a lift ticket up. Yeah. I would think this is great for someone that's never skied before. Like our kids found it challenging. Mm -hmm. But I would not pay more than $30 for it a person. Yeah. That yeah. sounds about right. With equipment. Yeah. You know, on the other hand, uh, we only spent a couple hours out there. I suppose somebody could go do it all day, but yeah. we'd pretty Why quickly get bored. To? Yeah, there's just not that much to it. Okay, so we're up to 760. Now, what value do we put on the tubing? Which was really fun, I thought. It was a good sized hill. Yeah, tubing was pretty fun. Um, and we've done almost that exact same thing at other places. And we pay about 20 a person. At about the same scale. So sure, let's call that 20 bucks a head. Okay, so that's 840. Yeah. So then, let's see. Okay, so that's 840. Yeah. So then, let's see. They had um, a big indoor water park area with a huge slide that our kids are mm -hmm. talking about all day today oh, as yeah. they were going to school. Um, a that big hot cool. tub, although not quite hot enough. I wish it was a bit warmer, but I mean, yeah. it was nice. And there was, you know, every, you, at the end of the day, seeing everybody come in and enjoy it together was nice. Yeah, so that I probably would say for a water park like that, we'd pay $20 a person as well. Sure, that's about right. So that's probably, because not like a Great Wolf Lodge level, but it's no. nice. So maybe no. level, but it's no. nice. So maybe yeah. nine twenty. So, okay, so we've already reached the value of our hotel stay, and we didn't touch on some of the other benefits. If you eat all the food, which yes. you will. If you're going to, like, go heavy on food, because right. let me be clear, when we go for an average day of eating as a family, we're not spending 380 No, easily. You know? Yeah, but this kind of encourages you to just keep coming yeah. back and eating more. Exactly. Um, but you also got a free cocktail every day. They had yeah. a happy hour. We questioned how much alcohol was Sure, but I mean, it was a nice gesture more than anything. Yeah. And you can bring your own drinks. We started bringing bottles of wine to dinner, and that was totally fine, even yeah. encouraged. Um, and there was some entertainment. You know, they had mm -hmm. a juggler, they had a magician, they had uh, trivia games. Yeah, that's true. They had a schedule all day of, like, different things like that. Um, oh, we didn't touch 
on the number one thing this place is known for. Horseback riding. Rocking horse ranch. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. So that's expensive. Horseback riding is very expensive. Again, it would be if you went to something where you got a lot of interaction yeah. and a lot of, you know, adventure. This was a very slow trail ride with a huge group. I felt like the, in this one case, the ratio of staff to the number of participants. It wasn't right. Yeah. Um, they spent a lot of time just waiting on people to catch up. And so you're doing yeah. it. You're out there. You're on a horse. I think the horses are very well taken care of. They all look very healthy. You know, there's just, you'll kind of quickly get bored. You would only do it once and say, okay, I did it. But would you really say, man, how thrilling? Yeah, you Probably get a not. one hour ride per day. And you can do that every day you're there. And even on checkout day, by the way, they let you stay and mm -hmm. have lunch and go mm -hmm. horseback riding, yeah. etc. But for the beginner lessons, I didn't love it. They were a little harsh with my daughter, I thought, on the horse. But if you they were, felt they were stretched a little thin in their staff ratio. In yeah, that one area. But if you were intermediate or advanced, which they also offer that level, oh, I think you'd have a better experience because there's so very maybe, few people on the rides. There you go. I guess that's something I didn't see. Yeah, yeah, I saw some people who are advanced level, which they say a beginner is anyone that's done less than ten hours in the last two years. Mm -hmm. But if you've done more than that, I saw some advanced riders going out, and they look like they're having the time of their life. So that's definitely, you should uh, insist yeah. on that if you can get to that level. So that's definitely, you should uh, insist yeah. on that if you can get to that level. The pony ride was pretty sad. So mm -hmm. um, if you're under seven, you're mm -hmm. not supposed to do horseback riding. Our kids were allowed, or our daughter, because she's six, but she's over 48 inches, mm -hmm. just barely, but she was fine. Yeah, they let her and she was um, fine. Yeah, but the pony ride that my son went on, um, I think Wyatt went around a tiny loop one time, and even he was like, I don't want to get off. This just started. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't put a lot of value on that. Yeah. We, we didn't do laser tag, which was included, which could be valuable. Definitely. Their um, little arcade is not the best arcade. Um, oh my God. We spent like $80. And I mean, it's expensive. <laughs> that is definitely not in the all included aspect no. of it. Yeah. It's a dollar per game, which is like really high. It's more than like a Dave and Buster's would be. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, so I think what it comes down to is how much value do you place on the convenience of gathering all these activities under one roof? More and it's or less. a small resort. So like, yeah. we didn't like at Beaches, Turks and Caicos that we literally were sprinting from place to place. That's they had true. like trolleys taking you different yeah, areas. Yeah, because you had so much ground to cover. But yeah. here it's, it's nice and feels like family oriented in that it's all in one area. Yeah, so I would definitely go back because we live so close. Right. I would say it's a great destination to drive to. I wouldn't fly here. No, I don't feel yeah. like it's enough to attract you from across the country. It's probably enough to attract you from within three or four hours driving. Right. Um, but yeah, I would go back to Rocking Horse Ranch. Yeah. But I'm not looking to go very soon. As soon as possible. Right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. But I'd go maybe next year yeah, or we go have with good some friends. Time. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can get people to come along with you and enjoy it together, that's a, a great way to enhance the enjoyment. I agree. And um, I think, again, staying in the lodge, I think we would have had a different experience. It was just so cold this weekend, mm -hmm. and it really killed us every time we had to run. Um, also, our room had some issues, like our toilet got clogged, which That's they handled true. well. I mean, yeah. Um, we didn't clog it. Like, it's just the toilet's backed up. Or, like, the curtains um, were falling off the little curtain rod, you know what I mean? Which, in an outside to... motel, people could yeah. peer in at you. Yeah, so it was a little And um, the walls were so thin. That we our friends our next yeah. yeah our friends next door knew we were awake each day because they heard our alarm <laughs> when they would go hear our alarm go up they'd start texting us like I know you're awake now that I heard your alarm through the wall <laughs> yeah so I mean luckily we were friends with them but if that was a stranger that would you have might been feel awkward more uncomfortable right yeah I think the main lodge is probably not like that yeah um, and it had a kind of a warm magical feel to the mm -hmm. to the inside. Oh yeah no the, de the yeah. decor and everything it's very well run facility I enjoyed it I would go back. Yeah. Uh, just keep it like set your expectations to the appropriate level and make sure you're thinking of the right ages Like I would mm -hmm. ideally say you want to go with kids who are over six so they can do the horseback riding and the big slides and everything else But I think that once you get to like 10 you've probably outgrown it mm -hmm. So I think six to ten is your sweet spot for mm -hmm. the resort Yeah, exactly because you want kids who are old enough to do everything but not so old that they realize the limitations and wish they could do more. You know what I mean? Yeah, and those yeah. evening shows aren't going to work for anyone over 10. Yeah. Um, yeah. But our kids loved it. Like, yeah, they, they said they had a great time. They liked it better than um, White Face Lodge. They liked mm -hmm. it better than just about anything they've done. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of what we're looking for here. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be doing some more trips around the area, looking at more family resorts. 
they're not our initial go-to thought. So just always remember as you're thinking of um, what to do that we're people who usually prefer like authentic, smaller experiences. Yeah. Um, we're only now going on like our first cruise this year, for example. Right. Yeah, we're just tipping our toes into the all-inclusive waters. And I think we'll try it every once in a while, but mainly focus on just going out and finding the bespoke sort of things that we're really looking for. Exactly. But um, we do realize it's easier with kids. It's nice mm -hmm. to, oh, yeah. you know, not have to drag them around. But mm -hmm. you all might value it a little bit more if you're somebody who's always loved all inclusive. Sure. That's a good one. Yeah. But anyway, Rocking Horse Ranch, one out of ten. What do you give it? Oh, uh, seven. A solid seven. Yeah, me too. And it's funny, yeah. there were times when I was there where I thought I was going to, like, give it lower. But when I left, I was like, it was pretty good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so check it out. Rocking Horse Ranch. It's, I believe, two hours north of New York City. Right. One hour north of Westchester, New York. Mm -hmm. And you can actually take the train right up to there and they'll pick you up at the station and drive you to the resort. How convenient. <laughs>